Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we will do an end-to-end -end demo of recruiting solution that Microsoft has put forward in July 2024. This solution is still in preview. We will go and cover a basic scenario of a simple job ad lifecycle. The solution itself actually consists of three main components. It's a power-up recruiting app, the careers website that is used to go and apply for the job ads, as well as Dynamics 365 finance and supply chain where approved candidates are then converted into employees. First, let's take a look at the few configurations that have to be in place. First, let's navigate to feature management in Dynamics 365 and make sure that this recruitment add-on feature is enabled. Then still in Dynamics 365, let's go to human resources parameters under recruitment tab Let's make sure that the recruitment is enabled. Recruitment experience is HR recruitment and not recruitment projects, as well as that integration to new recruiting app is turned on. Then let's go to Power Platform Admin Center. And if you follow the instructions, link to which I will include in the description for this video, you will then have to select your environment and then go to the resources, Dynamics 365 apps. In here, you have to follow these instructions to install this Dynamics 365 Human Resources Recruiting Add-on solution. And that's a solution that will deploy Power Apps, Power Pages, as well as some cloud flows. So let's take a look at these components. First, let's go to Power Pages. Under Active Sites, I have Careers website. It's public URL. I made it public, but if you go into Edit, if you go to Security tab, under Site Visibility, because I already completed the design of this website, I made it public. And then under identity providers, that is where you can go enable or disable different sign in options, such as signing in with Google, Twitter, Microsoft, Facebook, etc. There's still some setup that would need to be placed to enable those providers for sign in, but that's where you start. Next, let's go and take a look at our flows. You see there are multiple flows that are related to job ads, candidates, applications, rejections, withdrawals, etc. All those flows are basically generating emails. And one of them right here actually generates a candidate inside Dynamics 365 FNO once it has been approved inside our recruiting app. Again, these cloud flows are automatically deployed as the part of the solution. And finally, if we go to our Power Pages, we see this recruiting add-on Power App. That's the app that will be used to generate job ads and manage applicants and candidates. So let's open it. So this is a default dashboard. It includes status uh, of the job ads, some upcoming interviews, pending approvals, uh, ready to hire candidates, etc. But what we will take a look at next are a few configurations inside Recruiting Power App. First, under Company Logos, that's where you add branding to these job ads. And we will see that when we go to Careers website. Then under Email Accounts Configurations, we can specify email accounts that will be used to send application confirmation prospect creation as well as the rejection. Under email templates, we can specify different templates that will be used to notify applicants that their application has been successfully submitted, rejected, or an invitation to apply for a job. Then as you create a job ad, you can apply a hiring template to it. So this is the one that I just created. It includes different stages. In this case, I have two stages, one, two, and three. And under each stage, we have a specific step. So in this case, each stage has one step. So I have online interview as the first step. If you look at the second stage, it's a coding test and then assignment as the third step. Again, you're free to create any templates that you wish with as many stages and different tasks within each stage. As the part of this hiring process, you may choose to capture answers to specific questions that are relevant for that position. So in this case, screen templates can be used. Here I have created one. If you look, I have two questions. The first one is, do you have C++ experience? Yes, no, Boolean question. And then you have a multi-select question about the programming languages that applicant knows. Again, those are things that would allow us to streamline the job ad creation. 
Now let's take a look at the diagram. So this is an overall process that we will try to replicate in this video. You see that it has all those three components at place. So we have teal color is the recruiting app. The red color is careers website. And then in orange, it's our Dynamics 365 FNO. So we will start by creating and posting job ad. Then we will switch on to career site and go and sign in, create a profile as an applicant and apply for a job. Then I'll show you how the applicant can then withdraw their application. Then we'll switch back to the recruiting app where we can review applicants, create a prospect, provide feedback for applicants, and then either accept or reject application. And if we do accept, then we will switch to Dynamics 365 FNO, where we can complete the hiring cycle, but basically converting that candidate into an employee. First, let's go to the recruiting app and create and post job ad. To do that, I'll go back here and click on job ads. Here I have three different jobs. They're in different stages, completed, active, and inactive. So let's just create a new one. First, let's populate the job summary. You see that it contains general information as well as the public information. So the public information are the things that will be visible to our applicants on the careers website. Here's a company selection. So this is an important step uh, because this is the legal entity under which the candidate, if it was approved to be hired, will be created in Dynamics 365 FNO. Then let's populate the public information, which is an external title and description. So with these details populated, let's just click on Save. And when that is done, you see that additional tabs will now become available. Let's take a look at the hiring team. So here we can assign different members of this hiring process. Some of them can be hiring managers, some of them can be recruiters, some of them can be just interviewers. So let's just click on new. In here, we need to select the name, click on the lookup. See, those are the two employees that are configured with proper security to be displayed as either recruiters or hiring managers. So let me select myself, then select the rule. Let's say I'm gonna be hiring manager, and then I will set myself as the primary hiring manager right here. But you may also notice that I have a choice to select myself as either recruiter, panel member, or the manager. So I'm going to click on save and close. So I will be a hiring manager for this specific job ad. Now let's go to the hiring process. That's where we can go and apply that template that contains three stages with three different activities. Now let's go to the screen questions. Here we can go and select the screen template. As soon as we do that, two questions that are part of that template are populated, but we can also click on new and add an additional question manually. And then optionally, we can go and enable approval process. So before the job is activated, someone has to go and approve it. So in here we select yes and then click on new and that's where we'd be able to select an approver. I'm not gonna do that necessarily here. I will just deactivate it and I will activate this job ad manually by changing its status. Now let's do the save. And right now, if you look at the status is draft. Let's take a look at all the statuses that are available for this job ad. So the draft and in process are statuses that uh, make that job ad unavailable on our careers website. Only the active one will make it available on our careers website. So let's select active. And by doing so, we are basically saying that this job ad is complete, it's set up, and it's now time to make it visible on our careers website. Let's do save and close. And right here we have this job 1003 for senior software engineer that has a status of active. Now let's go back to our diagram. So now what we'll do is these next four steps inside the careers website. We will go open the careers website, uh, sign in first, create a profile, and then apply for a job. And then I'll show you how we can optionally withdraw our application. In order to do that, let's go and open our Power Pages. Let's go home. I just want to copy the URL for our careers website. So here it is. Let me just copy it. And in a separate browser session, I will go and open this career website. So here's a separate browser session, copy URL. And this is how the careers website looks like. Again, I did not change anything here except for the name, which you can see in the top left corner and adding a company logo. Everything here is basically out of box here. You can add some information, introduction, maybe showcase video, product and services, basically anything related 
to what your company does. If you click on the jobs, we should see active jobs that are currently posted. And this is the job 1003, that's the one we just created. Two other jobs are either complete or inactive, hence they are not visible right here. So let me click on this senior software engineer job that I'm interested in. So that's where I would see the external descriptions such as description skills. So the view can be improved here, to be honest. The skills section has only two lines, but I have to scroll. Educational requirement, a company logo that I mentioned, and apply now button. So in order to apply, I need to A, to sign in first and then to create the profile. So let's do that. Click on apply now. And in here I can sign in with these options that are listed on the bottom. So I'll create a profile manually by clicking on create a profile right here. So in here I will use the email account, populate the username and the password and click on agree. Once that is done, I should be able to create a new account. All right, so the system is creating a new account on the careers website. Next step is to create my profile. I can do so by going in the top right corner and clicking on my profile. Click on create profile. And that is where I need to populate my personal, educational and work details. Percentage, let's say 50 to 60, click on next. Now we'll need to provide our educational details. Click on save. Click on next, move on to work history. That's where we need to provide our work experience. Let's pretend I'm a new grad and I do not have any work history. So I'm gonna check the checkbox, click on next. And in here I need to upload my CV, my resume. Once that is done, I should be able to submit. Of course, I can then go and edit it as I need to. Then let's go back to the jobs, select this senior software engineer job and click on apply. That's when I need to answer these screening questions. Yes, I do have C++ experience and I know C++, Python and SQL. Once I answer those questions, I click on submit. So now let's go to the action center and we see our application. We see the status submitted and we have an option to withdraw our application, which we'll do next. But let's go back to our flowchart. In here, we are on the last step on the bottom from our first column. So we have applied for a job. Now, if we go back to our recruiting app, select the job and go to applicants, we should see our applicants. And if we click on it, we should see the details about this application. So here's a candidate. We'll just click on it. Here's the details that we have entered in our profile. Let's go back. If we go to the screen questions, we see the answers to two screen questions that we have asked. Also, if we go back to our cloud flows and look at the when application is created flow and look at the history of it, we expect to see an email with confirmation for our application. You see that it's running right now. So that's the flow that should generate the email confirmation. So let's just wait for it. Once the flow has finished executing, you should see an email in your inbox thanking for your job application. This template, body and subject are based on the email template for application is created. Now, if we go back to the careers website, we can click on withdraw application. We will see this message and we'll click on withdraw. The status in our action center will change to withdrawn. And if we go back to our recruiting app, select our job and look at the applicants, we will see that our application now has a status of withdrawn. Now to proceed with our demonstration, let's go and resubmit or reapply for this job again. So let's go back to our careers website, select the jobs, click on apply, answer the same questions again, and click on submit. If we go back to track status, we now see two applications. One is withdrawn and another one is submitted. Let's go back to recruiting app and let's refresh this list. Now we see two applications here. Let's go back to our flow. So let's review the application, which we already did. You can also invite a candidate that applied to one job to apply for another. So in this case, we have two applications. Uh, both of them are from the same candidate. So what if we are a recruiter and we want to invite that candidate to apply to another job that we have? So we can do that by going to candidates form, selecting our candidate and click on add as a prospect. And in this case, we will select a different job, job 1001, and we would invite this candidate to apply to this job. We're going to click on add, click on job add. 
And in here, if we look at this job 1001, we see this candidate that applied to 1003 job also set up as a prospect here. What the system will do in this case, it will generate an email such as this that shares a link to the job to which we just invited our candidate. All right, let's go back to our process. Now we will provide the feedback for an applicant. To do that, we will open the application, which is in the status of applied. We will go to the activities. We will open the first step and change the status to recommended. Then we're going to click on this arrow right here to go to into details of this activity. In here, we see that panel members are missing because we only specified a hiring manager. So what we will do in here is click on new panel member, select one of the members from our hiring team, which will be myself here and then click on save and close. Now we have a panel member that is specified for the first hiring activity. Then what we will do is change the status of our activity from recommended to scheduled. Once activity has been changed to scheduled, we will go to the feedback section right here. So here's our feedback record right here for the job 1003. We'll click on it and specify our interviewer feedback. For example, if it's good communication skills, experience is lacking. And once we do that, we can click on submit. So this is how you can provide feedback for specific hiring activity related to a specific job ad. And finally, let's just go and hire this candidate. So let's open our job, find our in-process application and click on ready to hire. We're going to click on OK. So what that should do is it should trigger our cloud flow to go and generate a candidate record inside of Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain. From that point on, once it's there, we will complete our hiring process by converting that candidate inside FNO to an employee or a contractor. So there is a cloud flow called Publish Candidate to FNO. That's the one that is responsible for generating these candidates inside an FNO. You see it has completed successfully. So now let's navigate to back to Dynamics 365, select the HR module and go to Recruitment Candidates. We see that here is the candidate record that was automatically generated by our Cloudflow after we have decided to hire our candidate. From this point on, it's a standard process to convert that candidate either into an employee or a contractor. So let's just review what we have completed in this video. So we have created and posted a job ad inside of recruiting app. Then we switched to the careers website where we sign on, created profile and applied for the job. Then we withdrew application and applied again. Then we went back to recruiting app where we review applications, where we converted an existing application and invited that applicant as a prospect for another job. Then we have provided feedback for that job applicant and after that we have decided to hire that candidate that has triggered the flow to generate a candidate record inside of dynamics 365 finance and supply chain so overall i think it's quite early to adopt this solution it's still in preview of course uh, but you kind of get a sense of where microsoft is heading with it so they introduced the power app a power page and integration via cloud flows to Dynamics 365 finance supply chain. I think it's a quite a good start, quite a good uh, base for uh, companies or partners to finish it uh, and present it as a complete solution. Hope you find this video useful. Until the next time, take care.